update your Final Cut Pro and you'll get access to some new motion tracking features. I've certainly had a lot of fun with them here with our drone footage. With Final Cut Pro's new integrated approach to motion tracking, we identify some pixels in our composition, we analyse and track those pixels and then we're able to attach some objects to those pixels. It's a good approach in many scenarios but there are limitations, so let's say I want to take that object off the screen, things can get a little bit tricky. With that in mind, in this video I'm also going to show you a plugin that allows you to 3D map your footage, thereby allowing you to drop elements into that footage, 3D text for example, and it becomes one with the underlying footage, irrespective of the camera movement that then takes place. Everything responds perfectly, perspective shifts are aligned, everything stays where you want it. It's really, really cool to be able to do this inside Final Cut Pro. So just to clarify the difference, Final Cut Pro's motion tracking allows me to track movements within the frame. So you've seen that example. Now let me jump behind the camera for a second. What if I wanted to put something on this table here? Something artificial on this table, but I wanted to move the camera at the same time. Let me take the camera off the tripod. Okay, there we go. Now how, you may ask, is that staying put as part of the footage as I move this camera? Well the answer is 3D motion tracking and we're going to talk about that now. Stuart Carroll here, pleasure to talk to you as always. If you want to jump ahead to the three dimensional side of things there's a timestamp below, there's a link to that plugin below, it's for Final Cut Pro. This isn't a sponsored video but we do earn some commission on that link. It's not that that's a better approach to motion tracking, it's a different approach to motion tracking. As I've hopefully demonstrated, that's for putting things into your composition. First things first, let's look at how to actually physically track movement that's already taking place within your original footage. So here we are inside Final Cut Pro 10.6.1, make sure you update your Final Cut Pro to get access to the new tracking features. There's Alina standing on what looks like the surface of the moon. Let's say we want to track her movement across the frame there and then attach some kind of arrow or circle or icon or something like that to her as she's moving through the frame. In the inspector window on the right hand side scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see trackers. Hit the plus marker and up comes a grid on your footage. Drag that grid over your target and resize to fit. Hit the analyze button and let Final Cut Pro work its magic. Now I'm playing this back in real time, it's actually doing this at double speed, it's really quick and you can see the green frame around Alina tracking her movement. Now we have our tracking data and if we scrub through the footage you can see the grid tracking Alina. In your title browser find what it is that you want to be attached to your tracked subject, in this case we'll use a kind of pop up circle here. With that drag down on your timeline go to the transform panel and click on the transform grid. The drop down arrow next to the new tracker button lets us select object track, that's the tracking data that we just extracted from that underlying clip of Alina. We're now going to attach that tracking data to our circular title. Select object track and then reposition whatever it is you've overlaid to suit the underlying clip. In this instance it is Alina because she's what we are tracking and now when we hit play we have perfect alignment of that circle with the motion of Alina. Quick and easy I think you will agree and now free within Final Cut Pro. In this example I'll show you how to get around a common pitfall with this kind of motion tracking. So we've drawn our grid around the shadow of myself walking on this hill. We hit analyze and it's doing a pretty good job of following me up that hill, although you can see right at the end there the tracking jumps from the shadow to myself, so that's going to cause us problems down the line. Let's set up a little title saying Stuart Carroll Explorer. We'll resize all of that and using that little drop down arrow we will attach the tracking data that we've just gleaned or extracted from the underlying footage to this new title. Reposition it above my head and let's see what we've got. Okay, so far so good, that's looking okay. Oh, but it's kind of wobbling about all, oh, okay, that's not right. It's wobbling about all over the place and the reason for that is because there's rotation data in there, which can be fine, but in this instance we don't want that, we just want the title moving along at the angle that we've set. With the title selected, go up to the transform panel, hit that little icon there in the top right hand corner and you'll see we've got some options there. 
Down at the bottom we've got four tracking parameters. Position and rotation are selected. Let's unselect rotation. We don't want the rotation of the title, but we do want the movement or the position to change. Play again, up comes the title with the rotation option unticked. You can see we have nice smooth positional movement of the title, but no rotational movement. That's how you track elements that are already moving within your footage. But let's say you wanted to drop a spin sign on the top of the hill and rotate the camera around it. We wanted three dimensionality on that spin sign. We wanted all the perspective shifts to be accurate. We wanted to look like it was a VFX part of that clip. We need something a little bit more sophisticated, shall we say. And this is where the Motion VFX plugin M Tracker 3D comes in. With the clip selected, let's drag the M Tracker 3D onto it. And you can see we now have the option of tracking the footage there on the clip itself, or in the inspector panel there, we can track the clip. So let's do just that. M Tracker is analyzing all of the frames to extract the camera movement data. And it's this data that we will copy and then paste onto our title or whatever it is that we're trying to embed into our scene. Analysis completed. So we can copy the tracking data. And then we go into our M Tracker plugin and we can find a title or a drop zone or particles, pointers. There's so much depth in here that we're not even going to scratch the surface, to be honest with you. But let's drag a title on, first of all. And then we adjust the length of it so it's exactly the same length as the source clip. Select it. No tracking data available. Paste track. That's us pasting the tracking data that we just extracted from the underlying clip onto our title. Done. Tracking data saved successfully. First things first, let's change the text to Spain. Okay, and obviously it's not where we want it to be. So let's hit this little crosshairs. And let's put it somewhere, well, somewhere there. That looks a bit small. So over here in the inspector panel, we can adjust so many parameters. So let's make it a little bit bigger on the content scale there. We'll drop down the content position and content rotation markers because we want to do a little bit of work here. And we'll play around to get a kind of effect or kind of position that we want. Let's see what we've got so far. Okay, right, in the animation comes, that's pretty cool. You can see Spain is locked off there on the ground and it goes away, pretty sweet. For this example, I don't think we want the animation coming in, so let's get rid of the animation coming in and out. We just want it to look like it's actually there on the hill. And we've got a great starting point, but the key to this is getting your shadows and your light to match up with the environment in which you're adding that text and, and things aren't quite right here. Look at the shadow on me. It's a really dark shadow. You can tell that I'm getting hit by direct sun. No clouds, no diffusion, no nothing. And here with Spain, it's a little bit different. So let's scroll down to our shadow settings and change that shadow opacity to something more like 95%. Okay, that's more in keeping with the shadow on myself. As it happens, the position of the shadow is pretty good already, but we can go to light rotation here and we can move that shadow around, adjust the position of the sun. So let's try and get the alignment similar to what's going on with my shadow. That looks about right. I'd say the length of the shadow is pretty good, but we can adjust that here as well. And if you did have diffused soft shadows, you can hit the shadow softness here just to blend things out a little bit. But here there's basically no diffusion, so I think I'll put that to two actually, just to take a little bit of the edge off it. But now we've got something a lot more in keeping and I think, to be honest with you, we are basically done. Let's see what we've got. Okay, round we come, the Spain sign is revealed, the shadow's moving, everything is moving, the Spain is locked off in the soil. That is super cool, let's play that again. I'm moving there, everything's moving the camera, oh I love it. Fantastic. Because the Motion VFX M Tracker plugin tracks the entire scene, we're not restricted to keeping the movement of our new object in the frame. So for example, we can fly through the object, we can fly over it, we can bring it into the frame. There's not going to be any collision with the perimeter of the frame. In this instance, we fly through the Ranach Moore sign, for example, and you can just adjust that very simply just by moving the position of the various parameters of the title. In this instance, it's the z-axis, so we can push it further away, we can bring it towards us, and this is what allows us to actually fly through the sign in this instance. In this one, we took advantage of the initial animation of the text, Fidra Lighthouse, up it comes there in the image, and we've got an animated robot on the island for good measure. 
What about a shot of me watching myself as a hologram in Glen Co? We've motion tracked that hologram effect down to that path. It's stuck there. And because of the way this 3D mapping works, it doesn't matter that that wasn't in the shot to begin with. We're able to introduce it into the frame. I love this one. It's simple, but the text comes up. It's absolutely locked off. We've got a gentle diffused shadow, if I pause that, coming towards us just around the base of the text. There just adds a little bit of depth. And then as we get a little bit closer, the animation drops the text away and we look at the house. With a little bit more complex motion, we can really see the perspective shift that's taking place here. So hike Spain off the beaten path. It looks the way you'd expect to see it with motion graphics, but the ease with which we can achieve it is really what gets me here. For a longer, more ambitious clip, we have Turnberry Lighthouse. Okay, we're pointing at the top of the lighthouse, but we're going all the way around behind it. Surely it's not going to track all the way around, but it does. And because these are 3D titles, we get to see the back of the title as well. Here's another one showing perspective shift. As the drone comes in lower to the ground, we're looking up more at the castle and we're looking up more at the sign. And we can tell that we're looking up. It tilts back and then disappears. Like I say, there's no good or bad approach to motion tracking, two different approaches for different desired outcomes. The reason I'm so excited about the Motion VFX plugin is because I've been trying to get this outcome with the wrong approach, the original normal, if you like, approach to motion tracking, and you don't really get the results that you're looking for. So I love it, I'm dead excited by it, and if you are too, do check out the link below to the Motion VFX plugin. If there are any downsides to speak of, the first would be that you have to pay for it. I guess that's just the way the world is on this one. And the second is it's quite resource intensive on your computer. So you're going to have to see if you have a fast enough machine for this kind of stuff. Anyway, definitely worth trying out. I've certainly had a ton of fun with it. I think you will as well. It works particularly nicely on this drone footage. It's just, it's just good. And I think you'll enjoy it. Do stay tuned for forthcoming content. A pleasure to talk to you as always and we'll see you next time.